Welcome viewers to the True YouTube Moderator channel, where my goal is to point out all the flaws I find with YouTube and offer realistic solutions to those issues I find. It should be of no surprise that YouTube doesn't actually care about their creators considering the fact they sold us out to the FTC, which has resulted in us getting fined for the company's mistakes. Their negligence was further proven recently by the fact that in their latest YouTube Rewind, they included the channel Inez Batoa, a channel known for ripping off other creators' content and filing false copyright strikes against those who criticized them. It may seem like things have been going downhill for only a short while now, but the reality is that there are a number of serious flaws with this website, some of which have existed for over a decade. These range from issues with the types of content being uploaded, to copyright issues, to basic moderation. Some of this stuff is so simple that anyone with just a little common sense could do a better job running this website. That's where this channel comes in. I want to try to bring attention to these issues in an attempt to finally get them resolved. While I doubt that anyone at YouTube HQ would actually take these ideas into consideration, I feel the topics themselves are still worth discussing, and perhaps if another video platform ever wants to try rival YouTube, they can use these ideas to avoid making the same mistakes. As this is the channel's first video, I want to start the discussion with a relatively simple topic, that being the actual design for the website. I want to debate the fact that the current design of YouTube is fundamentally worse than its previous versions. Let's do a quick comparison, shall we? This is the YouTube homepage from 2017, and this is what YouTube will look like today for someone who has never visited the site before. Sure. The current version might look nicer in some aspects, but at least before we had a variety of content types rather than just one giant recommended page. Apart from the trending tab and a few other things like breaking news, it's just a random list of about 400 videos shown to the users seemingly without rhyme or reason. Before, there was at least some semblance of structure and fewer people in the comments asking, why is this in my recommendations? This got me thinking. What other beneficial features might have been removed from the previous versions of this website, and would bringing any of them back change YouTube for the better? In order to answer this question, I'm going to be using the Wayback Machine to view the past versions of YouTube, discuss what beneficial changes were made with each update, and at the end of this video, try to combine these features to create what I believe to be the best YouTube design. As I have around 15 years worth of versions to look at, I've had to make a few restrictions with my investigation. In order to keep things simple, I will only be looking at the home page and video page for each year, as these are the most frequently visited parts of the website. For my sample, I will be using snapshots from the end of each year and compare the changes between each version, with a slight exception for 2019 since there were quite a few noteworthy changes made throughout the year. Finally, when discussing the changes made over time, I will state why I like or dislike the change, and try to give a brief explanation as to why. I believe that covers the main points, so let's begin the review. To begin, we have these tabs at the top of the page. Aside from the fact home and video is redundant since the logo and search bar do the same things, I like the design of it. Using it to separate search options is an interesting idea to me. Next, we have the recently viewed and featured videos. I'm not a fan of the recently viewed videos since apart from the thumbnail, they don't tell you anything about the video before you click on it. Meanwhile, the featured videos provide lots of information, including title, tags, upload date, runtime, views, comments, and ratings. While it does look a bit crowded, I appreciate having the information so I can get a clear picture of what I'm about to watch before I click on anything. Also mention now that the Wayback Machine has a habit of not letting me see certain parts of the website, mainly the video player and thumbnails. The only feature of the video player I find worthwhile talking about is the mini player. While it's highly useful for mobile devices, the ability to open a new tab on computers makes it rather pointless for other devices. The last two interesting features from the 2005 homepage are the recent tags and last users online. While I don't see either of these features being very useful, it's quite apparent as to why recent tags no longer exist, just based on our results you see here. 
Moving on to the video layout, we see to the right of the video player is the list of related videos, honors, and related tags. Honors seem to be the awards the video has in comparison with the rest of the website, and I can see why it was later removed as the site expanded. While the recent tags look alright, they were probably removed for the same reason as the home page as a recent tags list. Playlists is also on there, so you can see what the video is being grouped with, which we still have today in one form or another. Underneath the video player are the video, user, and share details, all of which are rather self-explanatory. I very much like the fact that tags are clearly visible to the user, as it makes moderation for misleading metadata much easier. I also like that the embeddable play link is there, but the URL link above it is kind of pointless since it's the same as the link up top. Below both of these, it shows what sites link to your video, which I think is a bad idea, since I see the possibility of using the system to create links to scam sites and viruses, which overrules any possible benefits the system might have. Lastly, we have the comment section at the bottom of the page, and it's an absolute mess, being cluttered with each user's account information, which in some cases takes up more space than their actual comments. One person here also linked a bunch of videos in this comment section, which I assume was an attempt to get people to watch their content they made, something I'm very much against people doing. Overall, 2005 was a decent start, having a lot of good features, but also a few bad ones that they later removed. Along with making the top tabs a bit neater, they've added a groups tag, which is a way to search for specific playlists. Though interesting, I believe categories does a better job if you want to find a certain type of content, and creators can create their own playlists for their content on their channel page. The search bar has been moved and also simplified to be a general search instead of being separated into videos and channels. Recently viewed videos has been replaced with a list of director videos, which is only slightly better since the only difference is you can now see each video's title. Featured videos no longer list the number of comments, but they now say what category the video falls under. I like this change since knowing a video's category is much more useful than knowing the number of comments it has. It also added a news tab, which I also like. I appreciate when businesses communicate clearly with their audience. Other users online got changed to active channels, and they got rid of recent tags, which are overall beneficial changes. As for the video player, video and user information has been grouped together and moved to the right of the video, and can now be compressed to save space. Statistics are still below the video, but have been reorganized to minimize space used, while still clearly showing all the information. The comment section has been drastically improved, as now you don't have it filled up with everyone's information, only the comment they made. Videos can no longer be posted in the comments directly, instead creators can make video responses, where you can film yourself and share your thoughts on the content through this method. I don't think it was a very necessary feature though, since you could just make the video and people can search for it, or it'd likely pop up in the related tab. Lots of progress from last year's version. Home and groups tabs have been removed from the top of the page and were replaced with a community tab. The options for my videos, my account, etc. have been completely removed from the home page, likely being moved to be under the my account tab. Promoted videos and recently viewed are both included this year rather than having one or the other like the past years, but both are just as bad as their previous versions. Featured videos tab has had a negative change as while they have more video options from the home page, they've removed the ability to see the upload date and video tags. While I'm not a fan of no longer seeing the tags here, I'm fine with it so long as they can still be seen on the video page. The news tab has been expanded a bit, and the other online users tab has been replaced with popular videos for mobile devices. Further work has been done to improve the video player, the video link above the embedded option has been removed, and the content has been minimized further. The options underneath the video have been rearranged again, but also made to stand out on their own. Recent ratings was added, which I believe to be an unnecessary addition since you can't see them from the home page anyway. The tabs to show more from the creator and related videos have also been improved a bit, being their own distinct options, though the playlist section has been removed. Text comments are pretty much the same, except now you can sort comments and you can see the likes on said comments. Very few changes to the 2008 homepage, but a few questionable ones as well. To start, they got rid of the Categories tab at the top and brought back the Home tab. 
The search bar is now allowing different search types, which wouldn't be necessary if the Categories tab was still available. The Featured Videos had another negative change this year, removing the Categories listing from the description to match the top tabs. We did get the ability to see what videos had annotations and whether the video was partnered with YouTube, but I don't feel these were very good trade-offs. Also, for the time period I'd selected, it appears that YouTube did special events for the holidays, in this case Halloween. This year they had a festive logo and allowed director Wes Craven to pick the featured videos he liked. I wish YouTube still did stuff like this. Looking at the video page, and they've brought back the video URL link for some reason. Otherwise, they've further worked on minimizing the video information on the right. The related videos and more from the creator lists can now be minimized as well, which I don't feel was 100% necessary. The options under the video have their same style as last year, though the share options are already presented. Recent ratings was removed as expected, and a statistics tab was included, which the Wayback Machine will not let me see. Not a fan of the changes they made this year. Community has been removed from the top tabs, and the tabs overall don't look as nice as last year, and the search type changer has also been removed. Videos being watched finally shows the same information as everything else, and they now have a most popular tab that seems to include the most popular video for a specific category, which is interesting. This is also the year they started overlaying the video length over the thumbnail, which helps to save space further. Otherwise, the only other noticeable change is that they messed with the statistics tab again on the video page. A lot of changes for 2010. To start with, the tabs at the top of the page have been completely removed, which to me is a shame. The Feature Videos tab has been moved to the right of the website, along with the Videos Being Watched Now section, which has turned into the Trending tab. Finally, they removed the ability to see the video's rating before clicking on it, which I don't agree with since not only do I like being able to see all the information about a video before I click on it, but also makes it easier to moderate the content. Is the video doing badly because it breaks the guidelines, or is it just bad in general? It's interesting to find out why. The video page also had some major changes. There are no more related, featured, or from the creator tabs. There is only the video suggestion list. With all the space they've made, they also moved all the video information from the right of the video player to underneath, matching up with YouTube's current layout. They added a section for highest rated comments, which is only useful because for some reason they got rid of the ability to sort comments by different methods. The biggest change for this year was the rating system though. 2010 was the year that YouTube made the change from a rating system to the likes to dislikes system we use today. And I personally agree with this change. It removes the effort of figuring out how highly to score something and makes it a yes or no question. However, to see the actual likes to dislikes, you have to select a separate option, which the Wayback Machine will also not load. Along with the actual number of likes to dislikes, I would have also liked to see the percentage of likes a video has as it would be useful for comparison purposes. Very few changes this year. The recommended tab has been expanded once more and rather than having a most popular section, they just have sections for video categories. The video player had two changes worth mentioning. They removed video responses, which didn't seem that useful to me anyway, and they added a bar representing the likes to dislikes ratio. Not quite an actual percentage, but it will do. The home page looks much different this year compared to the previous versions, and it introduced the sidebar on the left like we do with today's version of YouTube. In that sidebar, we have a list of video categories along with a few select recommended channels, which is only really useful since the main page is so jumbled right now, showing a list of seemingly random videos, while featured and spotlight videos are off to the right. They also removed the website's news section this year, which saddens me a little since it shows detachment from their content creators. That being said, they've had their Twitter since 2007, so I'm guessing that's what they use these days. The video player is mostly the same, except for one big change that I absolutely despise, which was removing the ability to see videos tags in the description. By doing this, it becomes very rare for the average user to end up legitimately reporting a video for misleading tags, 
meaning most who break this guideline will just get away with it. The home page has changed style yet again, including a lot more red in their sidebar. Videos have all been sorted into categories, but it appears they've all been patched together like some sort of weird jigsaw puzzle. And they also have two most popular tabs for some reason. The video player also had some minor changes. One that stands out is that you can now see the creator subscribe account from the video page. The share, add to, and report buttons have all been turned into individual tabs, and the statistics and annotations have been included in that change as well. The best graphical change they made was move the like and dislike button underneath the ratio bar and view count. The homepage looks much better this year compared to the last one. It has different sections no longer restricted to just video categories, also including certain channels. The sidebar list of recommended channels has also been removed, which I prefer. They did add one useless feature, that being the ability to subscribe to a channel from the homepage without having watched any of their videos. Apart from when someone makes a new account after using the site for a while, I don't see any point to this feature. Yet again, more changes for the video page. The like to dislike ratio bar has changed colour from green and red to blue and grey, which I do feel fits better with the red, white and black colours of the website. They have also removed the number of videos a creator has uploaded, which I never talked about because it didn't seem that useful of a feature, since you either get recommended the videos automatically, or you just go to their channel page and click the video tab. The Wayback Machine also refuses to load the comment section from this point forward, so I can't comment on it, which frustrates me. There is one big change here that I disagree with, that being that they have hid the report button in a separate tab, and continue to do so up until the current version. Why they would hide one of their most important tools for the average viewer to help moderate their content is beyond me. The fact is that if you want people to use the features you implement, it helps that they are actually aware of their existence. Minimal changes for 2015. The only ones on the home page are that there is a trending tab now in the sidebar, and there is now a 360 degree video category. Video page appears to have no changes whatsoever. The only noticeable change was that they added a history tab, and I'm not sure why it didn't exist already. The only other change they made was introducing the auto player, which it will depend on personal preference whether you like it or not. They added tabs for YouTube Red, YouTube TV, and changed the upload button design. The video player had one minor change in that they abbreviate the subscriber numbers, which I'd be fine with so long as they kept the actual number displayed on the channel page. The only changes I'm aware that they made was that they've added hashtags and removed the ability to subscribe from the home page. Graphically, the website got a huge update, along with some new options in the sidebar, consisting of library and subscriptions. Both of which are pointless, because your subscriptions are already shown on the bar, and library just shows you the contents of your watch history, watch later, etc. They changed the name of YouTube Red to YouTube Premium, and also added the option to look for live streams. They've also added settings, report history, help, and seed feedback at the bottom of the sidebar. The top bar options have been changed a bit as well, now including access to YouTube Kids, Creator Studio, YouTube TV, etc. And the upload feature has been changed to include starting a live stream. Since you already know I don't like when important features are hidden, you can probably guess my feelings about them hiding the different platforms they have introduced. The recommended videos layout hasn't changed that much apart from rounding the view counts, which I'm fine with. They also changed their logo, which I feel makes them a bit generic. While I prefer what they had before, I admit the new one fits better with the current design. Furthermore, just after making a positive change and removing the ability to subscribe from the homepage last year, they bring it back again for no reason. With the video player, they changed the color of the like to dislike bar again to just pure grey. They moved the share, save to playlist, and misc options next to the like to dislike bar, which I find unnecessary. The views are also no longer next to the bar, instead directly underneath the video title. The subscription button has also been moved to the other side of the page. Worse, for some reason YouTube decided to start abbreviating all the subscriber counts on the creator's homepage as well. 
Apparently this was changed for consistency reasons, but I don't agree with it. Originally I didn't mind these changes, but after seeing the previous versions of this website, I'm no longer a fan. And now we come to today, December 2019. Before this investigation, I thought that the homepage was bad, but now I'm just wondering how they went so far backwards. It's not interesting, it's not coherent, it looks like one of those sheets of stickers you give to kids. Before, we were given reasons as to why we were recommended content, be it that it's what's popular, due to what you watched previously, or it's from your subscriptions. And why are the thumbnails so large by default? I'm fine with it as an option just like dark mode, but keeping it as the default is just strange. The only positive thing about it is that they removed the ability to subscribe from the homepage again, but this doesn't win any points because they already did that and they brought it back for no reason. They even made the video page slightly worse with two small changes. They moved the upload date next to the view count, and they moved the subscriber numbers away from the subscribe button. Not only do I think these changes make it look worse, but I feel they were completely unnecessary. The only addition that is somewhat interesting is the ability to see if the original creator applied to someone's comments and hiring. I'm honestly impressed they managed to make it so terrible. And now we have our final result of this investigation. My conclusions are that out of all the versions that have been created, I feel that both the best home page and video page belong to the versions of YouTube present in 2018, though technically this extends to every prior version up to 2014. The video page was easy to understand and looks quite nice. The only changes I'd suggest is bringing the reporting function back into the open and making tags visible again when you maximize the description. The home page also looks quite good, but there are certainly a lot of changes that I could incorporate from the other versions to make it even better. With that, allow me to present my draft design of my perfect YouTube homepage. Starting off, I've applied the modern designs of the webpage onto the 2018 format, which recommends based on categories, channels, or just some random stuff you might like. Or they could be replaced by an advertisement at the top. Mine also gives a reason for why you're seeing the content, but it's completely optional. Videos have their title, creator, and view count under the thumbnail, as well as a like to dislike percentage. In the top left corner of each video is a marker that indicates what category the video belongs to. These would ideally be symbols, but for now it's just color coded. I also brought back the tabs to the top of the page. Home starts highlighted, but categories, channels, live streams, and premium can help you find different types of content specifically, while the search bar effectively works the same as it currently does. Above the search bar, I included the trending search as well as YouTube Kids, TV, and Music in order to make users more aware of their existence. A few extra tweaks were made to the logo and other options up top in order to better use up the blank space. Lastly, I changed the functionality of the sidebar to be the user's personal options. This included moving the creator studio, dark theme, and language from your login area, since the tab with the different YouTube versions was removed, Creator Academy and YouTube for Artists has been placed within the Creator Studio. More from YouTube was removed since these would all fit in the Categories tab, and I just moved the remaining features further up. Anything from under your login bar is still there since they relate to your Google account rather than your YouTube account. Overall, I like the look of my design. I feel like it's the best of everything, and I haven't requested anything that should be too difficult to program in. I went so far as making a dark theme for it. However, I didn't feel these colors really fit with my design, so I made a special version. Let me just turn it on and... Perfect. Now it both looks good and gives users a subtle idea of what YouTube keeps doing to their creators. Unfortunately, copyright exists, so I don't think this version could actually be implemented, which is a bit of a shame. Alas, it's time this video came to an end. Thank you for watching up to this point. Do you agree with any of my points about the YouTube layout, or am I just being overly nitpicky? Please leave your thoughts in the comments below. My next video is going to be discussing a small but constantly overlooked issue with the YouTube platform, so while it's in production, I'll pose another question for you in the comments. What do you think are the worst issues with this website right now? 
you know, aside from the whole copper stuff that's going on at the moment. Doesn't matter how big or small it really is, let me know and I'll happily discuss them with you. Again, thank you for watching, and have a nice day or night.